Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Backfish, and today we're going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. My intention here is just to give you a quick overview, um, assuming you've probably worked with it before or at least seen it. So first of all, the Pythagorean Theorem is something that talks about the side lengths, it's a relationship between the side lengths of a right triangle. It only works for right, so we only use the Pythagorean Theorem when we're talking about right triangles. So let me remind you that right triangles have names for their parts. The two side lengths that meet at the right angle, this is the right angle, the two side lengths that meet there are called legs. So this is a leg. Let me use. The side that does not meet at the right angle is the hypotenuse. Another way of thinking of it is it's the one that's across the triangle from the right angle, opposite the right angle. You could even say the little right angle symbol points at that. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem says the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. What? <laughs> it says if you take one of the legs and square other leg squared, these are the lengths, of, then you'll get the length of the hypotenuse squared. We usually see that with, I kind of like to say leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared because it can be a problem if people forget that the C has to be the biggest side. It has to be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is always the longest side. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that to find a missing hypotenuse. Let's say we have a right triangle and we have legs of 3 and 8, and we want to know the length of the hypotenuse. This is a leg, this is a leg, they meet at the right angle. So here across the triangle, not touching the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. Okay, so leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So 3 squared is 9, 8 squared is 64, and that's equal to my hypotenuse squared. 9 plus 64 is 73, so the hypotenuse squared is 73. But we want to know the actual length of the hypotenuse, not the hypotenuse squared. So we have to unsquare it, which means take the square root of both sides. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Take the square root of both sides and we get x is the square root of 73, which is approximately, let's do it, square root 73, 8.54. All right, so approximately 8.54. Notice that this confirms what I said earlier. That's the longest side. It's bigger than 8 and it's bigger than 3. The hypotenuse always has to be the longest side. I would always suggest checking that when you're done with your problem. Make sure that the answer you got fits, whether it's supposed to be longer than the other sides, like the hypotenuse, or shorter than the hypotenuse, like one of the legs. Sometimes if you do it backwards, if you mess something up, that'll catch you. You can help catch yourself and, and make it right. Okay, so now one thing to point out here is a lot of times when we start this unit in geometry, that's when we start giving exact form answers, meaning we simplify the radical if it can be simplified, but if it can't be, we just leave it there. That's the most accurate answer is square root of 73. This is a decimal approximation I rounded to get this, so it's a little bit less accurate than this answer. That's why I have the little squigglies. It's approximately equal to 8.54. All right. Let's do one more problem, and this time we're going to do one where, forgive my less than perfect right triangle. Um, this time we're going to do one where the hypotenuse is already given and one of the legs is missing. This is where sometimes people get into trouble. you got to be very careful about this. It's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Not, and this is what sometimes people do, not the one I know squared plus the other one I know squared equals the one I don't know squared. Not if the hypotenuse is not the missing side. If the missing side is one of the legs, which remember this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is your hypotenuse, then we need to make sure we set it up correctly. It's going to be leg squared is 5 squared plus the other leg squared is y squared equals 11 squared. And then I can go ahead and square 5 and square 11. And notice that if I'm looking for a leg, what I'm going to have to do next is subtract. So I'm going to have to subtract 25 from both sides 
y squared equals 96. And I have y squared now. I'm going to go ahead and divide off these. I have y squared, but I'd like to know what y is, not y squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, and I get y equals square root of 96 does simplify. I know for sure it does because 4 goes into it, but there might even be a bigger perfect square that goes into it. That's how radicals simplify, is if there's a factor of the number up underneath the radical that is a perfect square, like 4 is 2 squared. It turns out 16 goes into this. Let me just show you what my calculator just did. It said, oh wait, that is 16 times 6. So I can break this into 16 times 6, and the whole point of doing that is I like to take things out from under the radical, and I can do that here. I say square root of 16 is 4, and it comes out. So that would be simplified radical form, or exact form, for my answer here. That's the same as square root of 96. If I wanted to change that to a decimal, I would get 9.797, so let's just go with 9.80. And it's really up to what your teacher asks for in terms of whether you need to leave things in exact form or whether you can change them to a decimal, which a lot of students are more comfortable with. But let me tell you, when you get used to, once you get used to working with exact form, it's actually easier and faster. So I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.